Hey guys, so long time no see. I feel like I start a lot of videos like that. I wanted to apologize for being away. Um, for the past couple weeks I've been very sick, not deathly ill or anything, but just um, I got some kind of flu slash cold thing that kind of hit me for the last few weeks and I've had a really runny nose and, and all of that and I just haven't felt like recording anything so I really apologize but I I, I do really appreciate all of your um, comments and and watching my videos and and everything and hi to everybody who's new so this video tonight is some suggestions for additional books um, to supplement your Suzuki books if you guys a lot of teachers use the Suzuki books because they have um, excellent repertoire if you're a beginner and um, they help to kind of incrementally build your your technique up and they're just a great kind of um, what is that word <sighs> method <laughs> that's the word they're a great method book for you to have but if you're getting a little bit bored with it if you'd like to supplement it or practice sight reading or kind of get out of your comfort zone a little bit um, these are some books that I've start, started to use and they are, they are books that my students have found that we really like and um, so I wanted to share them with you this evening. So the first one is Easy Classical Violin Solos by Javier Marco and here are all of the songs on the back here so things like Lullaby, things like Greensleeves, Furelies, Canon in D, um, we can't really read backwards but anyway some really fun uh, songs that you will you probably recognize and it's great if you actually want to practice sight reading let's say you're in like Suzuki book 2 or even Suzuki book 1 you can practice sight reading of course this would be excellent for you to use and um, also it'd be fun for you to practice memorizing some of these um, so you know when your friends are like you play the violin or you play the viola although this is for the violin you play the violin <laughs> What do you know? And you can, you know, play Canon in D, or you can play some, uh, something, you know, Fury Green Sleeves, something that they would recognize as well. So this is a good one. You can also practice your positions in it. So if you decide um, that you are ready to practice uh, second position or third position or whatever position it is, um, you can, these are easy enough for you to kind of practice putting in different fingerings and experimenting and all of that. So... Um, in fact, you can do that with all of all of the books that I'm going to show you. So the next one here is called 100 Classical Themes for the Violin, and I'm sure that they have something like this for the viola. Um, and these are a little bit more complicated than the other ones. There's um, there's you know some faster rhythms here, although that doesn't they're sixteenth notes. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're really fast. It just depends on how fast you want to play the sixteenth notes, right? But, you know, you're going to have things from, like, from Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto, Brahms' Violin Concerto, um, even piano concertos, um, symphonies, like the New World Symphony. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that one. And the Eroica Symphony, some Beethoven symphonies, Tchaikovsky, Vivaldi, um, just, you know, rec really recognizable themes that are from various instruments and genres of music in, in the classical genres, basically like concertos, um, symphonies, whatnot. So this would be great. As I said, it's a little bit harder. So um, maybe if you're kind of just beginning Suzuki book one, this wouldn't be the greatest one for you. So just so you um, have an idea of what they look like, you know, they're not too terribly difficult. But there's just some some things that might be slightly challenging, and that's just like a random, just a random page that I, I turn to. Um, but anyway, so this is great. And then if you would like to get an an etude, an etude is basically a study in something. So you might have an etude that really helps you, you know, deal with different hand patterns. So you know, if it's in the key of G, for example, you'll have your basic hand pattern and a low two hand pattern. If it's in the key of A major, you're going to have that Do, Re, Mi, One, Two, Three hand pattern and the basic hand pattern. If you're in the key of like B flat, you're going to have something a little bit different. I don't have a name for that one. <laughs> I probably should come up with a name. It's um, basically the Do, Re, Mi, One, Two, Three hand pattern, but it's shifted down a half step. So you're going to have lots of different hand patterns that you'll work with. 
and um, there's nothing too rhythmically challenging in this one. This one's not really t here to challenge you rhythmically. It's here to kind of get you around the fingerboard uh, with fairly simple bowings, like slurring two and four notes at a time. There's actually one in here, wow. It's uh, with some double stops, so that's kind of neat. Double stops are when you play two notes at the same time. So this is great. I do have some really old videos of me playing <laughs> playing these, so if you didn't want to play along with somebody, you know, they're fairly slow. I've recorded them fairly slowly, so you can kind of put your headphones in and we can play along together. And then finally, this is very cool. This is called Celtic, or is it Celtic Tunes? I'm so sorry. Um, if I've said that wrong, I know that I said that wrong, fiddle tunes, and it, they are for solo and ensemble by Craig Duncan for violin one and two, and they also have piano accompaniment, which is in the back of the book, so all of the kind of back pages here have the piano accompaniment, which is super nice, and then um, the front of the book has, you know, violin one and violin two, for example. Here's one part, and here's the other part, and it's just nice. You can play them in your lesson with your teacher, or with a friend, or just with yourself. You plug your headphones in and record one while you play the other one. I used to do that all the time. But they have some great songs in here, and I just really like the arrangement. So you'll have things like, I just flip through here, it's like Give Me Your Hand. I don't know if you've ever heard that one. That one's beautiful. Danny Boy, Swallowtail Jig. Irish Washerwoman, Scotland the Brave. Those are the ones that I'm kind of familiar with at the moment, but there's, um, there's kind of a little list of them over here. All right, so anyway, uh, in addition to playing, you know, your repertoire and your songs and etudes, you should definitely be doing scales because scales will really help you in, um, improve your playing and your control over the bow and over your left hand develop your finger muscles, of course help you get around the fingerboard. You can incorporate um, shifting and do three octave scales or two octave scales and, and practice shifting to second position or third position or if it's a three octave scale then you get way up there. Um, you can do different bowings, you can do dynamics, you can do different bow articulations like spiccato, staccato, legato. You can practice, you know, your vibrato and transitioning while keeping your vibrato going between notes and string crossings and all of that. You can work on speed, you can work on different rhythms. It's just, there's like a myriad of different things you can do with scales to kind of challenge yourself. And scales are kind of a hard thing to play. Um, so, you know, you should definitely be doing your scales every day. Take your multivitamin, take your scales, take your scales, play your scales. Um, but anyway, that's about it. I think I've babbled on enough. I, again, thank you so much for watching and thank you for all of your comments and everybody who's there. I know my videos aren't really the greatest quality and with lighting and everything. If you have any suggestions or anything, please let me know. And I will see you guys all very soon. Thank you. Bye.